Hey, Carla. Great to be back. All right, Carla, let's start with you. Uh, Pacific Gas and Electric has been behind those shutoffs uh, to the north. As of now, 312,000 of their customers without power. I understand you were affected by these outages as well. What have lawmakers been, have been saying about PG&E and their shutoffs? Well, you know, this was a rare case where you had Republican conservatives like uh, Representative Tom McClintock and liberal Democrats like uh, State Senator Scott Weiner on the same page. Eh? They were uh, representing their anger, their outrage. Uh, Representative Bill Connor tweeted that PG&E has paid out millions in bonuses and, you know, couldn't find the time or energy to spend on wildfire prevention. So that kind of outrage is what Ga Governor Gavin Newsom said, look, California consumers should be feeling he was out there with that message this week and you know i mean the outrage was there and yes i was affected i was filing my stories at 4 a.m from a floor of a 24-hour fitness because i didn't have the power in oakland and i think you multiply that by that kind of frustration with uh, by 2.2 million consumers and you get a picture of the uh possible political fallout for gavin newsom and the legislators in sacramento and carla really quick i mean that's that's part of this whole thing right aside from some of the health Health dangers, people that need medication uh, that needs to be refrigerated, that if they don't have power might be lacking. Uh, the lack of producti productivity for a lot of people that have to work without power, that is also a big, uh, a big drain. That's right. The estimates were California could take a $2 billion hit uh, because of the economic impacts. And we just got, uh, as we're going on the air, the, the first headline of, of a man who actually died because his medical device went off about 12 minutes into uh, uh, the po a power outage. So there were big human costs. Gavin Newsom seemed to be aware of that. But boy, um, the potential for blowback in Sacramento is huge. Zach, I should mention that here in Southern California, more than 20,000 so-called innocent customers currently without power in five counties. Uh, Governor Newsom's one-time Republican challenger, John Cox, has weighed in on the shutoffs, tweeting, Happy birthday, Gavin Newsom. Your third world state has people living on the streets, millions without power, underperforming schools, massive underfunded pensions, rationed water, and businesses fleeing. Time for you to troll D.C. distract attention. End quote. That was from John Cox. Uh, how good of a job, Zach, has uh, Gavin Newsom done controlling the message on this? Well, look, keeping the lights on is a kind of <clears throat> bedrock assumption that'll bring both parties together against you. And so I think Newsom's got to sort of get ahead of this message and show some leadership on this question. It's it's not an easy question in the sense that, you know, PG and E, I think, is taking a tack here where they're saying, look, uh, we almost went bankrupt over a fire and we are just not willing to assume this risk anymore. And there's some, you know, Senator Weiner and others are saying, wait, wait a second, guys, you are not tailoring these to, for safety, you're actually just cutting off broad swaths of California without cause. Newsom's got to get in between both sides of this and find a solution and be more proactive. There was a lot of reaction to what to do about PG&E in terms of finding responsibility for the campfire, in terms of uh, trying to find a way forward to where they would not go bankrupt. But climate change is a reality, as you were talking about in the last segment, and risk it continues to rise. And I think Newsom's got to show some leadership and come up with a plan that demonstrates that not only he understands the problem, but has some solutions and is ready to fix it. And Zach, it sounds like there was going to be maybe no smooth way to do this. I mean, it, like you mentioned climate change is a problem that uh, we all have to kind of face up to. And it's happening, I think, a lot quicker than anyone expected. I think that's right. And I don't know that it's realistic in the short term to assume that PG&E is going to, to have the ability, because they're so far behind financially right now, to do things like, for example, fireproof the, the electrical networks in California by putting them underground. That's very costly. I think they also, in terms of a business plan, need some, some way in which they can um, uh, effectively control for risk. And I don't think the legislature or the governor's office are, are quite willing to take that responsibility on themselves. And so this, I, I don't see a solution to this and, uh, if we don't come to terms with the fact that there's some very expensive, difficult changes to California's climate that are going to need some commensurate, expensive, uh, you know, leadership uh, type solutions to solve them.
And Carl, you mentioned how when it comes to power shutoffs, that's something that Republicans and Democrats uh, both can agree on and both can equally hate. Uh, how do you think <laughs> Gavin Newsom has handled the criticism lobbed his way? Because Doug LaMalfa has piled on PG&E and uh, Gavin yeah. Newsom. <laughs> well, you know, we have to remember that this day came down in a week in which Newsom had hundreds of bills on his desk. They have to be signed by Sunday. There was that. But on the other hand, if you're sitting there with lights off, you don't care. You just want the lights back on. And I think there's some evidence that, you know, folks in Sacramento, including Newsom, in the beginning of the week were not getting how this was playing out for pe real people who were about to sit there in the dark. I was at an event in Oakland this week, just lights, hours before these lights were about to go out. And Newsom was there with all these legislators. They were going to sign housing bills. And the big, huge press corps on hand did not want to talk about housing bills. They were all going to pummel Newsom with questions on the outage. Uh, uh, and, you know, you had bureaucrats uh, at Caltrans suggesting this was going to be the new normal for California. And I, you could hear the, the cries of uh, like, oh, no, it's not from a lot of consumers. <laughs> I think Newsom got that message yesterday because he gave sort of a damage control press conference. He just blistered PG&E. He said this was not a climate change event. This was a mismanagement event. This was greed. And uh, he said he's going to hold them accountable. So there's a lot of real tough talk from him. And he said this is not going to be the new normal. So uh, I, I think we, we have to watch how this is going to play out. But I think that Gray Davis um, message got to him real fast. I was about to mention Gray Davis because <laughs> power cuts and the governor's office. So when you put those two together, if you've been following state politics for a while, that it'll lead you back to Gray Davis. Um, that's part of the reason why uh, he was uh, recalled. Uh, and, and obviously PG&E's issues predate Gavin Newsom. Some, but Zach, is there a risk that this could take him down somehow or take him down a notch maybe? Well, I think, yeah, history does teach us that issues, fundamental issues like keeping the lights on can change people's perspectives over literally overnight. 